For too long, indigenous people were shamed and even forbidden from participating in their own cultural activities. Think about the things you do every day that make you feel like you. Singing, dancing. Celebrating holidays with family. Lots of that kind of stuff was taken away from our people. I'm so glad that's not the way things are today. Me too. Still more work needs to be done to give First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people the chance to celebrate who they are. Celebrating our culture helps us understand who we are and gives us a sense of pride and community. I couldn't have said it better. My name is Larry Ahenikiu. I'm from northern Saskatchewan. I'm from a little town called Isle of La Crosse. It's a Métis village. Uh, and then I attended a residential school from the time I was six years old until I left when I was 16. Actually, there was a couple years in there that I didn't, but there was a difference too in the, in the say, eight years that I was in residential school in Isle of La Crosse where all my clothes had a number on it. That was my identifier. The first three years that I was in, because we didn't have kindergarten, so that was the first three years of grade one to grade three, I was number three. And then when I got back after a year out, spending a year with my grandparents in town, I came back and I was number 13. And then after grade seven, I went back out for grade eight and then came back for nine and 10 to the residential school, I was number 39. Everything was done by the use of a bell or a whistle. And you knew when the bell rang or when the whistle blew, you had to do certain things. You stopped whatever you were doing and you did something else. And usually it was go inside, behave yourself, then we can go for supper. I'm 70 years old now and I'm proud of being 70. I'm glad I lasted this long. But you know, it's a sad testament to residential school because there are days, there are times when I still wait for that bell to ring to give me permission to do certain things. One of the things, one of the major things I lost in residential school was parenting. Because I didn't have a role model that parented, you know, it was supervisors that kept us. A father figure? No, and really that had a negative impact when I got married and had kids of my own. Sadly, I tried to raise them as I was raised in residential school. That doesn't work. There, there's, there's a lot in there that, that's not there. So for, for people, for students today, I'd just like to say, you know, appreciate your parents. They're teaching you the best way they know. And for me, the best way I know it sadly was not. It was, it was regimented. It was institutionalization. It was... Parenting was not, was not, just not there growing up. I've listened to people talk about, oh, I wish there was a residential school or a boarding school where I could send my kids so that they could, you know, get out of this rut, whatever that rut happens to be. And I figure, man, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. Keep your kids home. Stay with your parents, young people, you know, and, and appreciate the fact that you've got parents that, that love you, however that translates into, you know. The, the message that I would send to young people today is be proud of who you are. Uh, stay true to yourself. Learn your culture. Don't lose that part of it. And if it's an indigenous language that you have, be proud of it use it where you can. I do, I, you know, I spend a lot of time out of my community and have for the last, I, I would say 55 years since I went back to Isle of Cross to live. Uh, yeah, just, just be proud. Be proud of who you are. It's wonderful to see how many people today take the opportunity to honor and enjoy indigenous culture. And not just indigenous people either. There are many festivals and events that celebrate indigenous culture that welcome many non-indigenous people as well. That's right. 
and taking the opportunity to spend time all together is a great way for us all to keep walking toward reconciliation. That's the walk I'm game for. Me too.